Hey everybody, it's Nightwing DM. I go by Strike in the Air. Uh, appreciate you coming to my channel and watching. Uh, today I thought I would go over some very basic information about the DCS editor in the 2.50 from beta. The stable is exactly like this. I don't believe there's any other, any more functionality in the beta than there is in the stable or vice versa. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to come up to the, uh, the main screen and click on mission editor that's going to bring you to this screen and you can either go create new mission or open mission if you go to create new mission it's going to bring you to the uh, coalitions page and this is where you can assign different countries left or right or to red or blue uh, you click on it hit the red for red if you want to bring it back then you click the blue and the same thing on the other side or click on the button Guys, I am no expert by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know anything about scripting, triggers, any of that. This is just basic, just very basic stuff, some things that I've learned. I hope that will help newcomers coming in, and hopefully I'll catch the eye of some experts that can guide me along as well. If you see any discrepancies or if I say something wrong, it's not intentional, please notate it in the, uh, in the comments below. I, I absolutely would love the criticism and any advice as well. Or ideas so while I'm on on this subject what I want to do is get the community together and do a community built mission so here's my proposal if we get say 50 subscribers in the next 24 hours from the time this video is uploaded we will I'll do a live stream and in chat we will all come up, we, we, we all give each other the ideas that we need to build a mission. What the scenario is, what the map is, and, and we'll build it live in, uh, in a live stream. It sounds like a lot of fun. I'd love to have had that happen. So uh, there's a challenge. So anyway, uh, over here on the left, you can choose your map. Caucasus, Nevada, Persian Gulf. Those are the only three I have. I don't have Normandy. But the Norm Normandy map, it, it, everything would work the same, I'm assuming. I'm not really concerned about this. We can go custom modern World War II. Uh, so if you, you have a World War II assets pack or a World War II map like Normandy, you just click on that and it'll... Mm, actually, I guess you can do it here too. Okay. Interesting. Um, modern. I guess that those are presets that you can take. Where you can do custom, where you move things wherever you want. So, but anyway, I'm not worried about that so much right now. I'm gonna hit OK. If I get a circle, this is stop it. And here, the map is loading in. And it's a blank map. This is obviously the Persian Gulf map. Strait of Hormuz has taken a minute to, to render faster than it was. It used to take forever. If anybody's interested, I'm running a Core i7 first gen, 12 mega RAM on a Rampage 2 motherboard um, and a GTX 1066 gigabyte. Yes, DCS is on an SSD. Um, so. so anyway, this is what the blank map looks like. Your bullseye point is here. You can move that to wherever you want. Doesn't really matter. This is for the red. If I want to move the blue one, I click over. And just move it. You can see where the lo long lats or, or, or numbers are moving. Longitude, latitude what have you so you can move your bullseye wherever you want now the information I'm about to give to you is thanks to Maverick and a couple of other people I saw in his chat Maverick from the 104th Phoenix fighter squadron live streams quite a bit really nice guy I've had for years issues with figuring out bullseye and if you're new to flight sims it's something that you may pick up on but if you're like me it just it takes you forever so, say I'm, I'm flying and, and, I, and I know where I am on the map. If I call out, I can actually take this tool down here, 
click and drag and it will give me distance and nautical miles and degrees. So the 91.85 NM is nautical miles. That's the distance, comma, 101, it's 101 degrees. So that's a good way to tell if you can see yourself on the map or you know where you are on the map and you get into trouble. If you get the time, because it's hard to do, um, then you can you know, go into the map and just... I'm 80, 82.49 miles, 66 degrees from bullseye. So uh, that's probably not the right terminology. But anyway, so you can move the bullseyes wherever you want. You want to click off of this little tool here. This measuring tool comes in real handy. Real handy, as you can tell. Because you can measure from any point to another point. Okay. So anyway, that's a that's a uh, an empty map. So we'll we'll move the bull. I normally don't mess with those. Just just screwing around. If I want to move something. I got to click off of that, and then we'll go over here and uh, we'll put it over Siri Island. And the red side will move to. My main concern right now is uh, mid-air refuel and then beginning to work on carrier ops. I haven't messed with the weapons on the uh, Hornet yet. I've never been able to mid-air refuel. I mean, I was able to er in the early days of Jane's F-A-18. But we're talking a completely different animal nowadays. It's, it's much harder to do because it's far more realistic in terms of flight models and turbulence and, and all these other uh, things that... that, that make flying a plane challenging so I put up a video last night I don't know if any of you saw it hopefully some of you did where I was actually really I, I, I was able to, to do a good job and stay connected and it's the first time that's ever happened uh, had I videoed and put up the other times that I was trying I'd have been all over the place and the experts and I say experts the guys the veterans that have been flying a long time I have two but I'm a crap pilot um, the, the, the veterans that know what they're doing and that have stuck with this over the years, uh, they would have been giving me the same advice they give everybody else. Relax. Not so aggressive on the stick. Not so aggressive on the, on the throttle. You know, because I'm, I'm over here you know, way overcompensating for, for trying to get, get into that basket or, or wait for that probe to come down and, and get to my plane. And the same thing with the throttle. You know, just overcompensating. You know, pull all the way back on the throttle to slow down and all the way forward. So, you know, finally, after, after some serious practice, and it took serious practice, I'm finally starting to get the concept. But it still takes a lot more practice. So if I went in there and did it right now, I'd muck it up. But that's just life. You just keep doing, doing what you can and keep going. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to lay down some, uh, I'm going to put down some tankers, I'm going to put down uh, a couple of ships, and I'm going to put down some airplanes. Just so you guys have the basic concept. Now, I did this recording earlier, but I didn't have my mouse enabled. So I'm saying, well, if you go over here and click on this, and then you go down here, see that? there was no pointer so nobody could see anything so I'm having to redo this so I'm gonna start with a tanker actually no I'm gonna start with the carrier and there's a reason for that I'm gonna click on the ship and I'm gonna click here right so it puts down the Tarawa I don't want the Tarawa just yet so I'm gonna drop that down and I'm gonna make that the Stennis it's gonna be for the Hornets and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna name that Tar... no <laughs> Uh, CVN 74 John C. Stennis. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna. Mm, you can't copy and paste there apparently. Um, CVN. I'll just put it exactly the way it is. I don't think that'll be an issue. 74. And you can do whatever you want here. I mean, Stennis. I mean, you can type whatever you want and there's not gonna have an adverse effect up here. Uh, condition 100% see the percent there you can put I don't know it's at 75% for whatever reason no, apparently not yep okay it's at 75% side USA
one if I wanted to put uh, a battleship uh, escort in here I would increase this number and then as I went through I would pick whichever one is the battleship that's a fast frigate isn't it I think right so say I do that <clears throat> I put that fast frigate in there this is kinda over this I could zoom in and click on the stennis nope okay there's a here's a point see where that one appeared in yellow that's because I was I was in add not edit down here in the waypoint window so I need to go to actually I'm gonna go to delete because it's yellow it's highlighted it's just gonna delete the waypoint so then I'm gonna go to edit because I want to get to the stennis it's highlighted it's in yellow you can see it here if I flip over to the frigate I don't care what this thing is named um, actually I would probably name it exactly what it is here but for right now I'm just gonna go frigate no because I didn't spell that right I'm just go FFG um, so this is attached to the stennis because all I did was go up here and click it was one of one at first and then it then I clicked on this little arrow that said one of two and I was able to switch to it being a different ship right now that it's attached I'm on the stennis if I add waypoints this secondary ships gonna automatically move with uh, with the uh, primary ship so the stennis is the primary because it's unit one and then the frigate is secondary it's unit two you will see once I've clicked I'm gonna go to edit so I can highlight <clears throat> once I clicked waypoint out here the zero appeared next to the stennis making and this is the same way with tankers making for all intents and purposes the stennis waypoint zero right so but you'll see here on the waypoint um, window that it's showing zero of two. Zero is one, one is two. Two is three, as far as this is concerned. I don't mean to confuse anybody. It can get confusing, but this is just to kind of point that out to you. So some things I want to do here. So you know, I'm going to want the ship moving, so I'm going to I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm on edit. So I'm going to stretch this out some. And in the Persian Gulf map, dude, it is a big map, guys. It is a big map. It may not look that big, but it, but it is. It's pretty big. Uh, so those of you that don't know how to mid-air refuel, I would learn. Because it, for the missions that are going to be taking place on this map, uh, it's almost going to be a necessity at some point, be it going in or coming back out of the uh, mission objective. Okay, so that's zero, that's one. Uh, let's see, because you know I want it moving. That's going to be 64 miles. Maybe I want that to move a little bit longer, so I'm going to stretch that out a little bit more. And you'll see here, speed is 11 knots. That's where you set the, the speed. Uh, the, the airplane waypoint box looks identical to this, except the feet. I think these are reversed. The knots and feet are reversed. Sorry, you guys, you're gonna hear some background noise. I'm actually out in my common area, um, and, and I don't have much of a choice, so my apologies for that. Um, So these two are reversed in the airplane one you'll see. For this one I can't obviously put feet in because it's the, the ship's in the water. It's not gonna lift, it's not gonna go anywhere. And I'm assuming it's that way for vehicles as well. Okay, so anyway, let's see how far this guy's going. 89 miles. All right, so I, I guess that's good enough. So then I'm gonna, go back, I'm going to click off of this, I'm going to go back to the Stennis, 
Now, as I was saying earlier, you could zoom in like this. Or you can stay out here, hold down your left alt button, and then click on the first icon. And it brings everything up that's under that icon. And then you can click on the Sten S and you see how it did not do what I wanted it to do. Did I click on Stennis? I clicked on Stennis. I don't know what this is. Unit 1 or 2. Oh. Somehow it changed the... the name or I did something wrong and if there's somebody out there watching this that knows that, that, that is more advanced at this editor than I am that saw the mistake that I made please just point it out please okay so number two wait no I added a three so we're gonna, I'm gonna take that out and put a two in there See what I did? It changed it to the Stennis. It eh, whatever. So we'll change it to the frigate, and then we will change this to make sure I'm on unit two of two. And we'll just say FFG. And again, it's attached to this Stennis, to this ship, this vehicle. It's a unit. It's unit two of two of two at this point. So I click back. That's the Stennis. And so on but anyway so okay he's going that way we'll make it okay it was on edit not add got to remember the details we'll click up we're just going to make a big rectangle basically i want to adjust that a little bit bring it to here now add and then i'm going to bring it back to you know what let's just make it go on a grid right so We'll go to, we're on edit. We'll just move this before we get too far. I'm going to go Stennis. So it's going to move the whole group. Yep. So we're going to bring it down here to the corner of this. To here. And this changed again. I see it. I'm... I guess, I guess I just need to leave it and see. I don't know why that's bothering me so bad. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with it. The unit, the, the other unit can be named the same thing. I don't care. Um, I guess it's because the, the name of the group instead of just the just the ship. Just a second. Okay, and so we're on edit. We're going to adjust the waypoints up. And I'm just going to basically have them follow this two square area, uh, which is a pretty big area, right? So, and I'm going to go add. I'm going to click another one here, which is going to be number three. But according to this now, it's number four. made a Z. So we'll just easily fix that. Move that to there. This to here. I don't know why I'm doing it. It may do it again. Uh, it's probably because I was on 2. So see how 2 is highlighted yellow? If I click on 3, the very last waypoint, and then click Add, it won't do that. It'll go wherever I'm pointing the... Uh, cursor. Well, it did go where I pointed the cursor, but I was highlighted on two. So, and then, oop, I just added another one. So, see how that's kind of overlapping? There's there's five and four there. Five is in yellow. I can just delete that out, go, go back to edit, and then drag it back to here. I wish there was an option for a cycle function for the carrier. At this point, I'm assuming it's going to make this big box, and then once it gets to four, it's going to stop. It's not going to go any further. There's an option with the carriers, or carriers, tankers, and I'll show you this here in just a second, uh, where you can set an orbit 
and it will area for a certain amount of time. I think it's until it runs out of gas. So, all right. So we're going to make sure we're on unit one. We're going to go to skill, which is something I should have covered earlier. We're going to make him excellent. I'm not worried about the unit uh, name, and that's pretty much it, right? Nope. We get a little bit more to do here. Going to go to the advanced waypoint options down here on the bottom, underneath the waypoint window, and we're going to add. Now you see that number one there? That number one is not a waypoint. That corresponds to the tasks that have been assigned per waypoint. So this is waypoint four. I'm going to back up to waypoint one. See how that box disappeared? Now I'm going to go to edit. No, sorry, I'm going to go to add. Now I'm at waypoint one. But remember, zero is actually the first waypoint. That's the unit. That's what we want for this. So I'm going to back up one more to zero. And what do we see? Activate tack hand bearing 1x tanker going to make an adjustment to this. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to edit it. This automatically was put in there by the uh, uh, program. Automatically populated it. We're going to get more into the use of this here in a little bit, but it's it's extremely fortunate, fortuitous that, that, that they put that in here. It makes just makes it a little bit easier. The cool thing about this is when you're setting up TACAN, which is the right now the best way in the Hornet at least, to find objects uh, uh, like carriers and tankers and, and airports. Airport, not so much. You could put a waypoint there, but using you're going to have to use a TACAN right now for anything that's moving in the Hornet because the Hornet doesn't have an ILS system integrated into it yet. It's supposed to at some point. When that's coming, we don't know. But hey, early access is early access. And I, I know a lot of people say that. So just kind of remember that. The other thing we don't see here is a radio option to input any type of radio frequency up here. You will for the tankers, but you don't for the Stennis, and I don't, I don't think you see it for the Tarawa either. I'm going to put the Tarawa in as well. So what we're doing is it's TACAN is 1x. I'm going to edit that. Edit it. Edit. It brought up this window. I'm going to change, no, I'm not going to change that channel. That's going to be my main carrier. I'm going to leave that at the channel that it's at. The ships, at least from what I've seen, the channel mode has to be on X band or X ray. It cannot be on the Yankee band or Y band. Uh, the tankers can be on either or the planes, but the, the ships or the ground vehicles, from what I'm seeing, that, that can broadcast attack and have to be on X ray. I'm going to leave it on channel 1 because this is my main carrier. And I'm going to change this. Instead of it being TKR, I'm going to change it to MOT. Short for mother. So when I'm flying the Hornet and I bring up the... the uh, hang on. When I bring up the tack hand on it, when I dial in this number, that is going to show up in my HSI as well as on the lower right hand side of my HUD. And you'll see that. I'll go into the the sim and let you let you see how that works. Tech in's pretty easy to use, right? So we've got the Stennis in. And he's got movement. So let me make sure I'm on edit here so I can click off of this. We can zoom out. Left click to hold nope, sorry, right click, hold and drag. Mouse wheel to scroll out. Remember, we're doing this big box. I have I've got one ship added as a um, where my ship go? Hmm. Well, you saw how to do it. Edit, and yeah, there's a car horn. I got my window open. Guys, like I said, I got fans going on and everything else, so my apologies. So I'm going to go to edit. I've got this box where I want it. I want to put in the Tarwa. This has already got pretty much everything I need. 
So I'm going to make sure that I click on the stennis and I'm going to hit control C. And I'm going to offset from the stennis. I'm going to click, left click, and hit control V. There is another stennis. There are the waypoints. All I need to do now, this is easier with ships. There's more you have to change with um, tankers, and we'll get into that. But all I did was set that first one up, highlight this yellow, left control, C to copy, and then offset, click, click, left click with my mouse, and then control V to paste, and it put in everything in there. Now I can change this from the Stennis to the LHA, change the description, and you see the moment I put this in here, or the moments I, ch uh, I, I, put the, I, I put this in here, it kept the name Stennis, but it hashtag 001 or pound 001. It was the Stennis earlier because it was identical. So it, it made an automatic change to the name, the model name, or the name here. So I flipped that over to, Sten or to the Tarawa, and now I'm going to change this to the LHA, LHA-1 Tarawa. Saves a little bit of time, right? Something I want to add to the Stennis is, can I get to it? That put me on a waypoint. I don't want a waypoint. Want a waypoint. Unit one. Um, and now I've got the Stennis highlighted. I'm going to put in parentheses mother. I don't think it makes a difference, but for the naming conventions, for me, working on the mission, it helps because that's the name, that's the call sign for the ship. That's what I'm calling it. For the Tarwa, I'm not going to control call it Mother Two. That would be a bit too confusing. Uh, we're just going to leave it as Tarwa up here, but we're going to change it down here. We're not only going to change that but we're going to also change its uh, tech in channel so we're going to click edit and highlight it click edit go to this i'm going to change it to two still on the x-ray band and then i'm just going to tell the call this t-a-r uh, three letter abbreviate abbreviation for the tarwa All right now i've got the tarwa pretty much set up i've got it offset at some point, it's going to cross in front of the uh, the carrier, the Stennis. But I'm not overtly concerned about it because you can see where it makes its turn. Now that I'm thinking about it, that might be a problem. So we're going to go back in here and we're going to click on that. Any one of more. Actually, I want to click on the Tarawa. I'm going to adjust where she's at. So, Tarawa Unit 001. That's not a white point. That's the unit. Highlights it yellow. I'm going to move it inside the channel. And that's going to be what? Five or ten miles? Eight miles. Okay. So, we've got an eight-mile separation. And I'm going to move the... Make sure we're in edit. Nope. See, we're still on, on the measuring tool. you got to pay attention to the details, guys. And a lot of times, they skip by me, so you'll have to excuse me. So if you see a mistake, please point it out. All right, so I've, I've clicked on that waypoint. Yeah, I've got a hold of it. I'm still left-click holding, even though it's behind the window. And I'm going to bring it inside this box. And I'm going to make it straight. And I'm going to make it turn... And this could end up being a disaster. Probably shouldn't do it this way. But the whole idea of this of this video is just to show you guys how to do some of the basic stuff here. And again, I, again, man, if people are up for doing that community, I'll do the live stream, community mission. I'll be all over that. I would love to be a part of a part of, of getting the community together and doing something that collective. It would be awesome. So, not that it hasn't been done before. I'm sure it has, but hey. Uh, 
And in people who've never done it before, have never flown DCS, if you're new to DCS, you're more than welcome to come in uh, and, uh, and join in and listen and ask questions and whatnot. So, okay, so I got a little ahead of myself here in the recording, so I'm going to delete this out. I actually had to <laughs> redo this one um, to describe to you guys what's going on. So, again, pay attention to the details. I'm not... <clears throat> I'm going to delete this out. So what we're doing is we're putting in a tanker. So I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side and click on the airplane icon below the fly icon. And I'm going to put this as a KC-130 right here. And this is where I'm going to start it. Uh, so we're going to call this... I'm going to name it the same thing I would name it here. We'll say it's... Uh, Nope, it's got to be a tanker, so i got to change the plane type first. So if I'm KC-130, it's one with the basket. Change his skill type to excellent. He's going to be one of one. I'm not going to put an escort. I'm not worried about it right now. This is just for refueling practice and carrier practice. And we'll go with Texaco, so we'll name him Texaco. <coughs> right? That's not, that's for naming convention only for the mission so you know what you're doing or so you know what to fo follow with to make it easier for you. Uh, where the call sign, again, is going to make a difference. See what they've automatically done down here? They've automatically populated the tanker or the TACAN um, number. So we're going to edit that. We've named the Stennis 1, the Tarawa 2, we're going to name this one 3. And unlike the carriers, you can actually put these on a Yankee or X-Ray band. We're going to leave it on X-Band. And we're going to go from Tanker to Tex. Because that will show up when you put in the tech and number. The difference being in a couple of different places between the ground, the ships, the ground units and the ships and the, and the planes is starting right around here. You see that tail number and the comm button is automatically checked and the radio channel is, is automatically, uh, or the megahertz is automatically put in. This is 251 megahertz AM. We're just going to leave that as it is. But just to point out, if I put another one in here, say I, I copied this guy, control C, paste, control V, and I click on him, it's automatically going to put that 001 up there with a the hashtag, and he's got the same tail number and same uh, radio number. We're going to want to change the tail number to something to, to different, and the radio number to something different, as well as change the tack hand if we've got two tankers in, which I'm, I'm going to be putting in another tanker. But I, I just kind of wanted to point that out to you real quick. So, working with this one, we're working our way down. His name is Texaco. He's on 251 megahertz AM. Uh, you can go into, under the Waypoint tab, you can go into here, and Paint Scheme is default for these guys. You can do some adjustments for these planes in here, but for the most part, you can't do all that much. Uh, this, this will come into more play better with a, a plane that can be flown, and I'll show you or an AI plane, a fighter jet, or something to that effect. Again, guys, if I'm making any misstatements here, please correct me, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really new at this anyway. I haven't messed with the editor all that much over the years. Uh, anyway, we're going to click back to here, the route. We've got the waypoint window up. We want to give this guy some waypoints. Uh, I'm just going to click the first one. I'm going to highlight him, and then I'm going to click on Add. And then I'm going to click out in front of him just a tad, not far. Now again, just like with the Stennis and the Tarwa, the moment I click that waypoint button, it assigns zero waypoint to the unit. So you effectively have two waypoints here as far as the waypoint window is concerned. All right? So this is to get him started. Now you see some things come up here that, that are a little bit different where... Um, before you couldn't do the feet, now you can. So we're going to make him 18,000 feet. 
300 knots, which I believe from what I, from what Maverick said, that actually transfers to about 230 knots, uh, real real time flight. So uh, I'm going to set it for 300 knots, uh, and I'm going to. So we're going to start him there. I'm going to go back to edit, and I'm going to do the same thing here. 18,000. So he doesn't have to climb up. He'll just spawn there at the same speed, just to keep everything uniform. Because again, it does, it's not something where we're going intricate. You just need something to be able to practice with here. All right, so that's the first waypoint. I'm going to put a second waypoint out here. Pretty good ways. Nope, was not on add. It was on edit. Pretty good ways. Uh, about to here, I guess. All right. Here is where it's going to get real interesting. Now you see it's already populated this tanker a, uh, dash a dash ref. This is the advanced waypoint window. I'm going to go to add. And this number that you see here has nothing to do with the waypoints. It has to do with the number of tasks that are in this box. So this is task two. Uh, number two of two, right? So perform task, I think it's under here. You've got a couple of things that you can pick. The perform task, drop down, orbit. Now we're going to set racetrack. Right now it's set on circle. But we're not going to be able to set it on racetrack. You know why? Well, if you did, you wouldn't be here. Um, because of the fact that we need a, a fourth, remember, by the count here, we have three waypoints. We need an anchor or another waypoint for that racetrack option to come up, and that's what we want. Otherwise, he's going to fly in a circle, which is fine. You can still refuel that way. I'm still a beginner at this, so I need I need him straight and level as much as possible so I can practice. Right? But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this. We need this information to match this information. So we're going to change this to eight. Nope. 78,000, 18,000. And nope, that's knots. We're going to change that to 300. It's reversed. Remember, it's converts to about 230 knots. And then we're going to go 18,000. I know it was 7999. It probably would have been fine, but still. Okay, so we've changed that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit. And I'm, I'm going to drop this box so I can see. Um, there's probably another way to do this, but I don't know what it is. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to add, and I'm going to go to this airport here, and I'm just going to give it a land, actually, go to edit, show you something. I'm going to put it close. Right now, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go to turning point, flyover point. I'm going to click landing. It's going to snap to that airport. Now that I've added in that third waypoint, I can go back to two. I'm still on edit. Go back to the advanced waypoint box. Click on the orbit. Click on edit. Now the racetrack option shows up. Boom. And this dropped down to 79999 feet. So I don't know if it makes a difference me changing it, to be honest with you. Okay, so that's a tanker set up. Well, we're not quite done yet. We want to, because we're new at this, and we're tempted to shoot down the tanker, and sometimes we'll run into it. What we're going to do is we're going to make him invincible. We'll die, but he won't. So we're going to go to add. So we're clicking on the tanker. This is highlighted zero. It says zero here. I'm going to click on add, I'm going to go to perform command, and then I'm going to go on the drop down box and go to immortal. And we're done with him. So what he'll do is he'll get to this waypoint, fly out to number two, and at number two he'll start a racetrack between one and two. Until he runs out of fuel, then he'll go and land it. I cannot pronounce that airport. So. I want to put in another one. I want to put in another tanker. Because this one's the basket. This one this one's gonna drop out the basket. I want to give the A10s the ability to I want I want to practice with the A10 as well. So I want to put a KC135 in. 
all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to hit Control C, just like I did with the Stennis. I'm going to have to make some edits, yes. Left click here. And then paste in another one. Click on the K. I'm, in, I'm still in edit mode. And I'm going to go to here. I'm going to take out this entire line because his call sign is going to be different. I'm going to change it to Arco. Actually, we'll change it to Shell. And we'll name him Shell. Right? Some edits that we have to do. Remember, we need to change his tail number because it'll cause issues if we don't. The other one has tail number 11. And we need to change the radio frequency. So we'll go 252. Easy peasy. Not that hard. Um, everything else stays the same with the exception of, you guessed it, we need to change the tack hand and the three digit call sign. So we're going to cl click on that, click on edit. Um, so remember, this does not con. con this is not waypoints. This number is not waypoints. It correlates to the tasks that are assigned in this box. So don't get that confused. These are waypoints. These are tasks. I, I made that mistake. All right now I'm going to drop down here. I'm going to back that up. And I'm going to make that number 4. And SHE for shell. That'll be the three digit um, call sign. Or yeah, three digit uh, indicator that shows up on the HUD and on the TAC hand in the F-18. And other than placing this guy, we're done. So I want to stay on edit because I don't want to add any more waypoints or anything. Everything's fine. And all I have to do is just kind of adjust what I want to happen now. And we'll give them a little bit of separation. I am going to make some other adjustments, though. Because like I said, I want this to be for like A10s and whatnot. And we will take this one over to here again. Well, I didn't have to. It was already on landing. See, it snapped right to it as soon as I let go. Uh, we are going to change the altitude. So we're going to change it to 15. And instead of 300, we'll go to 70. And, and if, if 300 at, at 18,000 feet translates to 230 knots... Somebody's going to have to help me out here. Does 270 translate to... Ooh, my math is off here. So we're minus, minus 20, right? So 300, 230. Freaking calculator. Hang on, guys. Give me just a second. So... Is 270 going to translate to 200? That's the question I've got. Because it's a 70 knot difference for the other one. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. But we've got a few things to do still. So, so we're going to make this 270 at 15,000 feet. Now we're done with this guy. We're finished. We're pretty much done except for the flyable airplanes that we want to put in. Um, I'll put one in on the Stennis. So we're going to go again over to the aeroplane. Actually, yeah, we're going to go to the aeroplane. I'm going to click on the aeroplane symbol. I'm going to click near the Stennis. KC-130. We're going to go to edit. Click on it again so it's yellow. We'll go Hornet 1.1 hot because I'm going to have it hot in, in, in the parking area. I'm going to come down. Uh, all, this is going to change, which I changed the aircraft, aircraft type. It's a K, KC-130. We're going to scroll down. See, the flyable planes are in yellow. So if you have a module, it will show up as yellow in here. Um, I have uh, Flaming Cliffs 3. So I have uh, a, a few different ones. But I've also got the ATNC, AT, uh, the Harrier, the F-15C, the Hornet. We're going to put the Hornet in, change it to Hornet, and switch from a K to an F. And we're going to switch his skill to Client. That way players can fly them. Right? Um, 
and we're going to put this in parentheses because I'm not sure how else to do it for the carrier I'm going to put Stennis I know that if I assign him to an airport the airport you'll see what I mean the airport will show up but if you assign him to I know what's going on okay give me a second anyway hot uh, Stennis we'll leave that for the moment I'm going to change it in a minute so it changes a bunch of stuff. We want him on client. Pilot number three, I don't care about that. Uh, he's at 305 megahertz. That's where it's going to start in my plane. Sorry about the car outside that's going by it. It's really loud. Um, call sign is infield. I'm not really worried about that either. Uh, we're coming back to this though. I'm going to click here. And this is where you do your loadout, your preloadout. Now you can do this in game. And I'll show you by hitting Alt, uh, left Alt and apostrophe beside the enter key to bring up the rearming window. So pretty much anything that you can change in here, you can change there. I tend to do it live. Um, but these are the defaults it's going to start with. I'm going to have it start empty. I am getting rid of the Blue Angels. I'm going to be go VF113. I need to figure out what the one for Oceana is and go with that one because I'm not far for Oceana. And I'm sure, I'm sure NOB, Norfolk Naval Air Base, has, has a squadron out of there, I think, unless they're all the same to Oceana. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's a real quick one down to this. Set chaff, flare, guns, loadout. Don't worry about any of that. These are triggered actions. We're not going to worry about that. Summary, I'm not going to worry about that. Failures, we're not going to worry about that. And radio presets, well, we can go in here. And we can set the radio presets for our plane. We can do it for the KC-130 as well. And honestly, guys, this is the first time I'm looking at this. So we're, we're, we're just not going to mess with it for right now. Uh, maybe if we do the live stream where people are helping, then helping build the mission, somebody can come in and, and tell us what those things do. We'll all learn something. Okay? Um... All right, so I've got this guy sitting out here near the Stennis. Instead of turning point, I want him hot. I'm going to go take off from parking, hot. He snaps to the plane, or the, the carrier. I'm going to do a Harrier. All I got to do is hit Control-C. No, I don't want to do Control-C. Actually, yeah, I do. We'll go turning point, Control-C. Click near here. Boom. There's another one. Now I'm going to go back to this guy. Again, hold down the left alt key if things start piling up. Left click and you can pick your unit. I want the Hornet. We're going to go back to take off from parking hot. And then we're going to go making sure we're in the edit. Click on here. I'm going to change that to a Harrier. And we're just going to change this to AD 8B 1 1. Change this to Tarawa. Get rid of this. That shows up because it was an identical plane, copied and pasted. You hear people going in and out, guys. I am so sorry. Um, then we're going to come down here. We're going to change this to an 88B. And all this is going to stay the way it is. And then we're going to go take off from parking hot and it snaps it to the Tarwa. Same concept for the airport. Same exact concept. All right, so I am going to put a plane over here. So I've already copied one. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go Control-V. It's the Hornet. Again, it put this up here. I'm going to get rid of it. Um, we'll say this is 2.1 hot. I don't know. And I can take this out because it's not going to say unit in the in the thing. You'll see when we're loading up to pick your place. It's gonna it's gonna give the airport information in the right column. But anyway, um, he's client. All this is staying the same. I'm going to turning point. Take off from parking. Hot snaps it to the airport. Parking slots you can pick from here. You just zoom in. They're numbered and you just pick the corresponding number. 
He's in number one. If I want to switch him to four, he'll jump from here to here. Boom. So, either way. Uh, we are going to put him back at one, though. Okay. Somebody's doing dishes behind me again. I apologize, guys. So, we've got some planes set up. We've got some tankers set up. We've got chips set up to practice on. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to save this. I'll clear this out. I normally save them strike because it's my call sign. That way I know even if I'm editing one that somebody else has done, I'll go strike. I'll put strike at the first one at the, at the beginning of it or at the end. So I can tell that I'm, I've modified it. Also leaving the other person's name in there to give them credit for the mission because you know, all I did was get in there and mess around with it. So we're going to be strike, underline, uh, refuel, case one. I put a comma, I should put a number underscore. Refuel, case one, whoops. Attack hand. Practice. And again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to hit save. Spell refuel wrong. Well. Now it's saved. Um, there was one last thing I had to do, and I can't remember what it was. Just a second. Well, I can't remember. Okay, that sucks. Uh, it'll come to me, but we I think we've pretty much got everything set up here Notice I'm not using any waypoints don't need them for this one These are moving objects or moving vehicles moving units So you're using a waypoint other than for like an airport airport for this isn't going to work and if we come down here to the airport If we can click on it, I don't know if we do it in the Persian Gulf or not Yeah, yeah, it's with the... So it gives the frequencies for it. Um, you can set it for blue or red. Hmm. Not sure what I'm doing there, guys. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, anyway. It gives the tower frequencies. I just wonder what the cam is. I, I don't know, maybe they're not working in there? In the Persian Gulf yet, but anyway. All right, so we've saved it. I'm going to save again just to make sure. And then I'm going to pause this, start it up. I'm going to hit this fly button, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you how to do TACAN real quick. I remember what it was. We need to input some information into the briefing so we know what we're doing, what we're looking at. So we've got two tankers and two aircraft carriers. We want the information for these guys to be in here. So I'm going to start with the Stennis. And all we're going to do, oops, that's not the Stennis. All we're going to do is we're going to go, right, so I wanna, just want to bring this information up. This is mainly what I'm worried about is the TAC hand, right? So I'm going to go to briefing. It could be under blue task. I'm going to put it under here, okay? So basically Stennis, T, Attack hand one x-ray mother All right and then I'm gonna do and you can make this look a lot neater than I'm doing it Tar <laughs> attack hand two x-ray tar Actually, I'll, I'll make it MOT here as well. MOT. And then... Because the radios aren't working for the uh, uh, ship yet, I don't think. Or, I don't believe. I think we just kind of covered that earlier. So... But, for the tankers, they are. So, we're going to go to here to shell. 252 megahertz AM. 
for x-ray. So we want to start with this KC-130 Texaco 251 megahertz AM uh, 3x. So we're going to go Texaco. Actually, no, we're just going to go KC-130. Texaco T C A N three X ray. What was the see that's what I'm talking about is my memory, guys. It sucks. Um two five one megahertz. Just a minute. Okay, so I went ahead and input that information here for the KC-130. I stopped the recording while the dishing, dishwashing was going on behind me. So I'm going to put in the KC-135. I'm going to highlight this. Control-C. I'm going to put it down below here. You can do this any way you want. It's just to show you what you can do. And then I'm going to change this to a 5, right? His name was Shell. Yep, shell. Tacan was four, and it was two five zero, I believe. But we need to double check. So we'll click on. No, it's two five two. So we need to go in and correct that. It is four, and and um. Yeah, so we need to go in and change the radio frequency and whatnot. And this you'll see in your briefing. Okay, that's, that's what I meant to do and I forgot about. But it's important so your people can see, your players can see what, your, uh, what this stuff is so they know, know what to do. All right, so... I think, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to make this match what it is in the three digit call. On the HUD and the HSI. All right. Make sure these two aren't going to run into each other. And we're going to click save again. And I will see you inside the sim. We'll show you how tech hand works. By the way, you want to go to fly to test the mission out. So, yeah, just click that button. Okay, as you can see here, mission overview, uh, it, the situation. This is probably, I don't remember if this, where this, this is where this goes or not, but that's where I put it, but you can see that information showing up there. I'm going to hit start, pause the video, because if I don't, it might ruin the video for me. So give me just a second. Okay, we're at the select role screen now and as you can see we've got an AV8 and, F F and two F-18s uh, the AV8's on the Tarawa the F one of the F-18s is on the Stennis see here where it says unit one, unit one I, 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 I'm missing something there so I'm going to have to go in and look at that and see if I can change change something because that way I wouldn't have to put it in parentheses here but in here, it automatically populates the airport that it's at. So I don't have to worry about putting it here. But you can see where it delineates hot. So if I've got a cold plane, which I'm going to put cold planes in, uh, so, so, so you can auto start, it'll say cold. That way, the player, whoever's joining, knows which one to join, which is for them. I tend to do the hot ones because, you know, if you die, if you die as many times as I do, Starting, starting it over and over again can just kind of become redundant. If I lived longer, then maybe it might be different. So, Anyway, just going to click on any one of these, pick a start position. We're going to actually pick the F-18 here at the airport. That way I can go through all the TAC hands. Because if I'm on the Stennis, it, I don't think it'll give me the Stennis information. So I'm going to hit OK and let it load. And here we are. Let me put on my trusty track IR. Lovely headband. 
or hat tracker thingy. Love track IR. Again, the information for the uh, for the tack hands and radios have shown up. Frequencies are down here for the Hornet. Uh, for the airport, there goes the motorcycle. I'm just going to hit fly. F10. That is a bug. I'm sure they're working on it. This thing's full of bugs. And I'm going to I'm gonna hit F10 to get this view. And then I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to click here. This information for the air dome is going to show up. It does not have a tack hand. Hmm. So because I do not have a waypoint set up for this airport or any AWACS or anything else, I would have to go to the map and use the ruler, which is available in the actual map, by the way. And if, if, if the map is allowing me to see myself, um, I would have to right click the ruler and get and you can see it up top I'm pointing with my finger like you can see it but you can see that information up top right so okay let's do the tack hand real quick we're gonna hit F1 to come back to our cockpit and I have a set of MFD Cougars that are set up just like the uh, HDI's no I'm not exporting the DDI's guys you can't do that with the F-18 from what I know of at this point uh, but they are set up on a 23 inch screen and they are set up to work with the plane so if I hit the menu button on the right DDI let me freeze my uh, track IR because I gotta lean forward you see it change I hit it again you see it change I hit it again put HSI if you don't have the Cougars, then you just, I'll do it again. You go to menu, menu again, HSI. You can do this for the left or right one. You can put it over here too. Hell, I think you can even have two of them. HSI. And click again, HSI. No, you cannot. Okay. All right. Uh, but you can put fuel state over here so you don't have to constantly look down here. Right. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up our tack in. UFC, up front controller, right here. Same concept as in the Harrier, as well as the uh, A-10. Um, the A-10 doesn't have as much functionality, but the concept is the same. Uh, well, maybe it does, it just, it's different. Um, I'm gonna click TCN for TACAN to bring up this information. I'm gonna click on, on. It's gonna bring this up. It's already on TACAN 1. If I hit enter, it blinks. If I hit, um, oh no, it's already picked it up. So as soon as I hit enter, it picked it up. I don't need to do anything else. And we can see that the Stennis is 55 miles away at 137 degrees from where we are right now, right? Um, if you do this, it's gonna go away. It's gonna spin, it's not gonna work because that is a ground unit or a, a, yeah, a water unit, ground unit. The AA, air to air, isn't going to work for that. So we're gonna pick up the Tarwa, two, enter. It blinks, picks up two, I'm gonna take it off of AA. There's the Tarwa. And you see, it says TAR underneath. Once you get in the air and get going, it'll show up right, right around where the NWS is here, right? All right, same idea tanker I don't remember which is which so I'm gonna hit my briefing and scroll up Stennis Tara Texaco that's the one with the boom that's the other thing I would do too is in parentheses in the briefing I'd put boom or basket for this one and then parentheses boom for this one that way I don't get confused uh, but we know that this is 251 megahertz and it is a, it is um, the KC-130 3 x-ray so we're going to go to three. No. What happened? Off. Is it froze? 
No, it's not frogs. What's going on? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Is it paused? I can't tell. Why is it not working all of a sudden? I'll have to figure out, but any figure it out. But anyway, you get the idea. None of this is working. I don't understand. I, I hope this is still recording. Um, try hitting the pause button one more time. F10. These guys maybe. I think this is kind of frozen. Oh, the other thing too, guys. Sorry, I've got my track iron on. Shift F10 will take your the labels off if you have a, a, a map that allows it or what have you. Uh, let's go F2. Nope, it is flat out not moving. These things are frozen in place. Both tankers. Hmm. They're frozen. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, the idea is the same. I would click on three, enter. It would change here, and then then I would click the AA, and it would show up here, just like uh, the tar was showing up now. It would give me degree bearing in degrees. And um, sorry about the jitteriness of my zoom there, and the the distance to it. And whatnot. And if I click tech in here, a box would come around this, and then up on the HUD, uh, around the uh, heading staple there, you would see a solid vertical bar come up, a short one, and then you would want to line that up with a carrot that's up here as well. But you know, we're not seeing that. But anyway, you get the idea. Guys, would love to do the live stream with everybody. Leave a comment for everybody that's interested. And we'll make it happen. Um, you don't have to subscribe. I'd like you to. It helps with, you know, it shows me that you appreciate what I'm doing. Uh, basically. So, you know, you don't even really have to comment. Subscribe would be fine. But if I can, uh, you know, I'd like to get as many people in as possible to do it. I think it would be a great thing if, you know, we went, hey. And we'll, and we'll put it up on the DCS page once it's done. For download, we'll put it up there. You know, community designed uh, map or community designed mission for whatever, and we'll do whatever map. It doesn't matter to me. So, if you like what you see, uh, you know, you can leave a comment, hit like. If you've seen anything that I've done wrong or that needs to be corrected, please let me know. Like I said, I need to learn just just like everybody else. Um, I've been around around this a long time, but honestly, I'm new at it. Because we really haven't done that much of it. So, anyway, this is Strike, Nightwing DM, signing off. Guys, I'll talk to you later.